Hi, good morning and good evening to everyone. You are on to a mainframe tutorials. Today our topic will be a JCL a job controlling language, which is very very important when you are working on mainframe operating system. So far we have been covering more about the mainframe basics the and it is important and where it is used and an introduction to an COBOL programs. We have learned about the various commands, statements, structures, the different sections and the blocks of the COBOL program. I hope that sh that should be a basic information about the COBOL and uh, with that we can start coding a COBOL programs. Before I start a COBOL program, just I thought of giving a glance introduction about the JCL so that it could be good to understand more and more in the coming videos. So, what do you say? Let's go ahead and start with the JCL. JCL is generally a scripting language that is used on mainframe operating system to instruct the systems on how to run a batch jobs. So, why I'm saying it is important right because you have created a COBOL program after creating a COBOL program what, it, what could be the next steps you need to compile the program and you need to execute the program for an expected results so in order to compile your COBOL program there should be an intermediate or an interpreter so with the help of JCL, with the help of the scripting language, we would be compiling our COBOL programs and executing those programs. So, compiling and executing. Compiling is one job and execution and getting the results is another job. So, in mainframe terminology, we would be talking in terms of jobs. So, so the important usage of JCL is it can compile both batch and online programs. I have discussed more details about what was a batch and online. The simple example I can give you is the batch process. So all the day-to-day -day transactions. If if you if you have an idea something about the stock exchange, so there will be a day there will be a daily transactions happen from morning to evening so at the end of the day they will run a set of set of different jobs to build some to create to generate some report about what are the different transactions they have created online the online is you have some trading account where you would be purchasing the share through an online so mainframe will have their online screens provided they they can with the help of the online screen they can do some trading so that's all about the online uh, the other best example is ATM machines or railway reservation systems so it can integrate it is used for integrating the programs it can pass large volume of data from one program to another program as I said mainframe is mainly used for high performance high calculation accurate accuracy system so it can pass large volume of data from one program to another program and the same way JCL can create or delete a data sets you have written a COBOL program which is a, which is used to simply calculate do some arithmetic calculation in order to do some arithmetic calculation there should be a data set defined where a data is stored in that particular data or we can I can simply say it as a file instead of saying it as a file in mainframe we are calling it as a data set with the help of JCL we can create a data set and delete a data set well so we can also organize the data in either in an ascending or an descending order for example I have a student address data set where all the address are defined so what I want to do is I want to sort this according to the zip code of a particular student or the postal code or based on the postal code I want to sort this either in ascending order or a descending order. 
and it can also be used to copy the records from one data set to another data sets. So in real time backup plays on a very important or a vital role to make taking a backup. So for example online trading I'm doing an online trading each transaction is recorded and stored into a particular file or a particular data set. So for I wanted to make a version so I want to store it as a versions or I want to keep it as a backup from first month first day first day to last day of the month so the simple way is to copy into your different co different data set next it can filter the records change the report layout send and report it to your printer we will I have with uh, with Cobol pro I have a Cobol program where it creates the report. So what I want to do is I want to send this report to a printer. The same way we can transfer a data from one system to another system. For example, I want I have a processed output on the mainframe where I want to give the, a send to to a downstream system called an a Unix system. The next, any batch process consists of main task. Each main task is divided into a subtask. Subtask we uh, subtask is divided into a diff data DD that is called as a data sets. In a simple way, I can say that if you like main task is a job, subtask is exec, data set is DD. Job is identified by job name, exec is identified by activity name, and DD is identified by DD name job name activity name dd name or user defined name or i can simply say a system defined keywords i'm sorry it's a user defined name. i'm really sorry it's a user defined name job is the job exec and dd these are a system defined keywords let's come into the actual structure of programming it is always defined with identifier, name of job, operands and parameters. So identifier, the name of the job. Job is identified by its job name, exec is identified by identity name and the DD input, DD output. So every job can have a multiple execs. For example, the maximum is 255 exec. My job is to do a calculation called adding. So, what is my activity here? My activity is doing an adding. Adding. In order to add, I need a COBOL program and I need two data sets. One is to take the input and one is to, uh, to store the output. In the same way, I have defined another program called Substract. With this activity is to take the input and write the results into output. Put followed by DD. DD. We will be talking more details about the parameters the position parameters are divided into a positional and the keyword parameters for example dd you are giving a dd name where are you storing from where you you will be receiving your data set so we will have one more keyword called dsn where you can you will be having an, a file name so we can talk more details about the positional and the keywords very important note for our one exec operands, we can code max of 250 DDs or it might be some more. One job can hold a maximum of 255 exec operands. Name of the job should be 1 to 8 alpha numeric with national, iterate, hash and dollar symbols. Activity name, first character must be alphabet or a national symbol. Hey friends, that was about the basic introduction of the JCL. I hope you have you all have understood what is JCL and where do we use this JCL. Thank you for watching everyone. Have a great and wonderful day.
So I would be coming up with more details about the COBOL and about the JCL in the coming videos. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.